Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you are new, make sure to drop a like or dislike if you're feeling that instead. Leave a comment down below so I can welcome you. And don't forget to smash that subscribe button. If you're not familiar with this channel's work, the main goal here is to shed light on religious and political deceptions, misrepresentations, and straight up lies. I'm calling out all the indoctrination factories in the world and no group is safe. This week's target, Islam and their false god. I won't go into the history of Islam here because there are other videos with that information. What I will do, however, is look at the weakest points of doctrine and use them to expose the illogical nature of this religion. First point is salvation. That is to say the path to a positive afterlife, what they call heaven. Regarding this, a Muslim believes that he or she cannot have a personal relationship with Allah. Instead, Muslims practice total obedience and submission to Allah's will via the five pillars of Islam. The Quran teaches that Allah forgives whom he pleases and punishes whom he pleases. So Islam preaches that you must balance the scales with good works and righteous deeds. Since Allah is the only one who knows the cost to pay back your sins, there is no real way to know if you have done enough enough until after you die. Now, the main logical problem here is that the Quran teaches that Allah is morally perfect, just, and hates sinners. This leaves Islam with the same conundrum facing other salvation by works religions. Let me explain. If you get stopped by a police officer for speeding, you might be able to bribe the officer with money to let you go. Now, if you were in a court of law and guilty of a serious crime, it's less likely that a bribe will work. You see where I'm going with this? A good judge has no choice but to make sure justice is served. So if a human whom is fallible cannot be bought, how much more a perfect and holy God? Think about it. What could you possibly offer Allah for him to be crooked enough to let you go after committing a crime and being found guilty? If Allah lets you go because you bribed him with your good deeds and righteous works, he could not possibly be God. While we're on the topic of salvation, let's address the next issue, the reward, your own personal harem. Your spouse is a virgin again, and youthful beauties wait on you hand and foot along with many other pleasures. Sounds great, right? Except there's just one problem. Fornication, lust, and premarital sex are all considered as sins. Why would something that is considered a sin on earth be a reward for the righteous in heaven? The Quran says that Allah is unchanging. So it's either not a sin in both places or it is a sin in both places. The idea that it can be a sin here on earth but then a reward in the afterlife of heaven not only discredits the character of Allah and the credibility of the Quran, it also is extremely illogical. Leading us to the third point, the Quran itself. Islam teaches that Allah is the source for both the Bible and the Quran, but Muslims believe that only some of the previous prophets were given books that are considered to be divinely inspired. They are also told that the first three on this list have been corrupted. So to correct the errors, Allah appointed Muhammad the fourth on the list to receive the Quran, that it supersedes all previous revelation and that Allah has preserved it from corruption. I'm not trying to start a war, but most non-Muslims watching this video have probably already figured out how this rationale is ignorant and completely illogical. If Allah, the almighty God that created everything in six days, is able to preserve the Quran that he gave to Muhammad, why then was he not able to preserve the other three? It makes no sense. Why do historical and archaeological finds such as the Dead Sea Scrolls confirm that the first three have not been corrupted, whereas the fourth, the Quran, is the only of the four that stands out as different and is not in harmony with the other three? It sounds a lot like what the Jehovah's Witnesses and Mormons have done with their holy books, but that's another topic for another day. I hope you found this helpful. I hope you'll share this with your Muslim friends that are being indoctrinated and brainwashed, and I hope that whatever your faith is, you're doing the best that you can and to research it outside of religious leaders because they don't have your best interest at heart. Most of the time, they just want your pocket. Everyone needs to wake up. I'm out. <laughs>